Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove some pressure blades from the core that we just roughed out with a hammer stone, the uh, core preform. And before we do, I'll show you my tools here. This is my support device for the core. It's pretty simple. It's just a piece of plywood. It's got a couple of two by fours here, just screwed into the bottom, right down here. And this is called a three point support device, being that it supports it here and here and on the lower end. So you place your core into there. I just got a bungee strap on there to kind of hold it secure. And as you can see, it's supported right here along this shoulder of the core and along this shoulder of the core. And then the blade is free to detach right along in here. Now the little pieces that you see over here are just to allow the insertion of a piece of wood so that now I can work smaller cores and then I have a thicker piece of wood in here I can put in as well if I want to work like micro cores. That's basically all there is to that. Now I have a second one pretty much identical to the uh, one I just showed you. It's a little larger, it's scaled up and this is the one I normally use especially for the earlier stages because it has a wider gap right in between the uh, two by fours but same thing, it's a three-point system and you can see I've got a pretty big shim in here in order to shim it up and this just slips out very easily. Okay, here's my Aboriginal support for removing blades from a core. It's just two tree branches. They've been squared off a little bit here on the uh, very ends. About 18 inches long, pointed on the other end, pounded into the ground. Take a flat rock, set it behind there. Put a little piece of leather down here to support the distal end of the core. Lean your preform up against these two branches here. Kind of provide a little three-point uh, support, just like my other holding device. Place a rock there just to kind of hold everything in place, just like uh, this replaces the bungee. And there you have it. We put this on the end, remove a blade. That worked pretty good. So here's the blade. It broke up a little bit, but kind of an early stage blade. So this setup over here is essentially the same as my portable unit. It's just that it's a more aboriginal, something they could have easily done. Perhaps they did do. Okay, we've got the tip of our chest crutch in place on the platform. Just push in straight in like that. When we get enough force straight in, then we'll just go ahead and push out. Here's our blade removal. It's our first blade. Our second blade. Pretty simple. That's it. Okay, the first thing I want to do here is to go around the core and look for prominent ridges that we can remove pressure blades pretty easily from. That'll provide us with straighter ridges and each time we remove another pressure blade we'll end up with a straighter and straighter ridge. So you can use um, an antler pressure flaker or a copper pressure flaker. If you're just starting out, you probably want to use a copper pressure flaker. It's a little bit easier to set up these platforms. I'll demonstrate this one first and then I'll, I'll switch over to the copper just to show you how that works. So it looks like our uh, first flake removal, first blade removal will be right there. Again, you want to make sure that your platform is less than 90, 90 degrees. Sometimes you can get away with a little bit more, maybe up to 100 degrees on pressure flaking. But uh, So what I want to do right here is to Remove a small flake right here. Just kind of narrow up that platform a little bit. You need to do this with pretty much every flake remover. Removal that you do on here. And I'll 
probably got about 75 degrees here. It's actually kind of a sharp angle on this one, so I'm pressing that edge back a little bit further so I can get a little bit deeper detachment. I don't want too, too shallow of a flake, and I'll abrade it pretty good on this one. You only want to abrade the area <clears throat> where your tip of your pressure flaker is going to make contact. So just right, right there. This area right here and on the other side, you want to keep that as sharp as possible because that's where your flake detachment is going to start. If that's sharp, the flake will release a whole lot easier. So uh, here's the tip of my chest crutch. Put that on there so you can see that. I want to make sure that it's grabbing it behind the actual edge there. That looks like it's actually too close in, so I'm going to reshape that a little bit there. It's actually grabbing it too far out near the edge here. So just strengthen that up a little bit. Otherwise, I'm liable to get a really, really thin flake that won't travel very far. Probably didn't do a whole lot of change there, but uh, see how that looks in there. Okay, that looks better. We'll give that a go. So I'm just going to show you how this fits in here with the support device on my lap here. This just goes in here like that. Give you a little bit of a close-up there. You can see where the uh, flake detachment is allowed to release freely right between the two blocks here, and it'll hurt this little hit this little curtain right here. Of course, you could arrange a curtain on the Aboriginal mock-up of this as well. So we'll go ahead and uh, remove a blade there. Okay, I've got it set up on the ground here. Put the tip of the pressure flaker with that notch right on the platform. I apply pressure straight in before I apply any outward pressure at all. So here we go. Here's our blade. Here it is back on the core. Went all the way down to here, so that, uh, that helped straighten that up a little bit and it gave us two better ridges. We'll give you a different perspective on the next shot here. Okay, we'll take our next pressure blade right here and we'll set up a platform here. I'll use the copper pressure flaker since that's probably what most folks are going to be using. The idea here is to remove fairly thick pressure blades here on this first go around because the thicker blades will result in smoother, straighter ridges. So that's what we're going to do here. So uh, we need to isolate that platform a little bit. It's a little bit high right in there. And want to get a real good seating. Now the Mesoamericans, they use fasted platforms like this and they also use ground platforms. Some cultures, uh, as time went on, they seem to have gone more and more into the uh, ground type platforms. Both will work. The ground platform has the drawback that it takes uh, 15 minutes or maybe 20 minutes to grind this thing smooth. But it has the advantage that it saves you time as you're removing all these series of blades. You don't have to spend all this time or as much time isolating the platforms because you're dealing with a real smooth surface. Now when you're setting up these isolated platforms, each one can take a, a minute or several minutes to set up depending on uh, how much work you have to do to lower this. Sometimes you have to rejuvenate the core top here because as you're going around, you start getting a hump in the middle of it here. So. Uh, I think we're about ready to see if this is going to fit on here. I'm just going to braid the very, let me see if I can show you that, just that edge right in there. Now if you're using copper, you need to abrade it a little bit more and you need to make sure that there's no high spot on there because the copper will crush any sharp ridges that make contact with the tip of the pressure flaker. 
Uh, that looks pretty good. Now we'll see if it's going to fit. I don't always do this, but when you're first starting out, it's definitely something you want to do. Let's see if I can get that in there. Yeah. Hopefully that's focusing. Okay. All right. We'll put that in the uh, support device and give her a go. Okay, we put our tip of the chest crutch right on the platform there. Start bearing down. Here's our blade removal. This one is a triangular cross-section blade because our platform was right in line with this ridge right here. Went all the way to the tip, really straighten that up nicely. Okay, so with only two pressure blades removed on this so far, you can see how it's already starting to look a little better. And uh, I'm going to run the next one right over here, and I think it'll come over here and remove this little projection right here. So I'm going to steer it off in that direction by applying my force in that direction as well and uh, just isolate a little bit more here just abrading the very part that's going to make contact with my pressure flicker nothing else okay we'll remove our third pressure blade trying to veer it off a little bit to the side there Okay, here's another shot of that blade. And you can see how each one of these is just making it a whole lot better. Still got a little projection sticking out right there. So what I often do is just take a little hammer stone like that and just get rid of those little projections right there. Now this one here we'll get probably when we get this one or maybe as we remove two more blades in here we'll end up getting this little high spot which isn't near as high as it was before. So I'm going to continue on with this and remove some more pressure blades. I'll put them aside and we'll show them to you later. And as we get into the, uh, these are called primary series, the initial primary pressure blades. And of course they're not near as good as the latter ones that we'll get that'll be pretty much all trapezoidal and cross section and much more refined looking blade so uh, we'll show you that here in a little bit I'm gonna turn the camera off for now so here's the first 14 blades we removed in sequence here as they came off the core and you can see the ridges are getting a lot more regular and uh, the core starting to take a pretty good shape now there are some problems here in this core that I just want to point out here um, this particular flake right here I tried to go really deep and as a result I've got a little area right there I'll show you how I deal with that there's some other issues on this core right here right here you can see there's a cone fracture there and there's several more right along in here along this cortex here where something tumbled along that when this was sitting out in the field you know thousands of years ago or whatever another rock or something so uh, that's going to present a little bit of a challenge. There's a little bit of an inclusion down here that surfaced uh, on one of these blade removals. Kind of unusual, perfectly round inclusion there. So here's another shot of that flake, that last flake I detached. And you can see I was trying to go pretty deep and wide. It's a nice, uh, nice blade, but it didn't undercut this little uh, high-rise area I've got right here in the distal end. So anytime you end up with a situation like that, you need to correct it because if I remove another blade over here, I'm just going to end up with a uh, sort of a wall going across here. So I think I can take and repair this one here with my pressure flaker. I'll just put it right on here. 